Welcome to Pro Practice, your guide to piano mastery. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode is a long-awaited tutorial on the Chopin, on Dante Spianato, and Grand Polonaise. And I have two different recordings of this on YouTube if you'd like to listen to those. Uh, the first one was with orchestra, and I felt the uh, on Dante Spianato went really well. The second one is from El Paso, Texas, and I just posted the Grand Polonaise uh, version because I had a little pause in this on Dante Spianato I wasn't totally happy with. But anyway, we're going to go over a lot today. This is going to be a very long tutorial uh, so that we can get through not only the first part, uh, the Andante Spianato, but then also a lot of technical helps and uh, pieces of advice for the uh, Grand Polonaise, like just that opening, those chords. That is so difficult. And I have quite a few different uh, practice methods that will help us get that. Let's start with the Andante Spianato. And the first thing I want to go over is an exercise I learned from Sergei Babayan with this piece. And um, he's such a brilliant teacher and uh, gave me this piece of advice when I was having a tough time with keeping my left hand even so far as sound, um, not so far as rhythm. I think, you know, it was even rhythmically, but sometimes you might notice that you poke out. You might poke that one out or... And I hear it with all the students that have brought this to me as well. The solution is to practice accenting various notes. So you can take a predetermined amount of notes, probably like five to 12 notes is, 12 would be the biggest piece I would take. Um, five notes is pretty small, so like one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, four, and then Can, you can get fancy and you can practice accenting within those groups, or you can just always start with an accent like I was doing. But if you wanted to just accent the second note in that first group of five, yeah. or. and it's ironic that you would practice accent work like that uh, in order to get rid of accents. The reason you do it is you completely neutralize your hand because you've practiced accenting every. Uh, group. Now, I do like that first way I showed you a little better rather than trying to just take five notes and then accent the first, second, third. I always like to start with the accent. Or, and then, and then. What that does is that will always help your hand feel light after you play that accent. So, And my fingering I like is five, two, one, two, one. That's just what feels good in my hand. This is the Ekier edition, the Chopin National edition. He recommends 3-2. That feels really nice as well. If you're gonna do the one that I suggest, the 5 2 one, two, one make sure you don't accent that thumb. So it might actually be a more complex fingering, but I like it because it's just so comfortable right there, okay? Now I would do a little something with the shaping, okay? Maybe a little more than less so that when the right hand comes in. And one thing to avoid with any Chopin introduction, this here's another one. You don't want to go and set the audience up totally. So don't do take a ton of time. I think it's okay to ease a little bit. I don't like it to just steamroll into the melody, but I think just the tiniest bit of time is okay. And let's talk about shaping this melody now. Okay, so I actually start pretty big, and by the way, I'm not using soft pedal when I demonstrate here uh, with the melody on its own. I do use soft pedal um, pretty much through this entire movement. Maybe when I open up a little bit more, uh, I will let the soft pedal go like in the E minor. 
but it all depends on the piano I'm on. I don't like to make rules for you absolutely use the soft pedal here and you don't use it here because every piano is different. You might be on a really velvety new Steinway and you don't even need to use the soft pedal and you need to actually play out a lot more in the melody. You might be on a really bright like Fazioli or Yamaha that you need the soft pedal on the entire movement. It it really just depends, or you can be on a bright Steinway as well. Uh, it really depends on the piano with how much you should be using your soft pedal. The unicorda pedal is um, the proper term for that, sometimes written as UC as an abbreviation. Okay, so I experimented for a long time. I've played this since I was probably 15 years old. And I experimented starting less and then going to here, but it doesn't make sense. It doesn't unify that figure. So start big and then get softer to there because that will allow you a lot of growth. And then diminuendo. And then I like to do a little crescendo to there. Now, don't take those 16th notes so literally that you go. I think Chopin was saying he didn't want it to be like one, two, three, like three even notes there. But I would use a lot of rubato in there. Okay, let's put that together. Diminuendo, crescendo. Go to there. on that five. Okay, and then maybe a little more energy. If your piano does have a nice velvety sound, maybe you just do half soft pedal. Or maybe you let it off completely. So again, diminuendo to here, and then I like to lift on the end of that slur and then reset my hand, three, four, three, two, three, five, or you can do three, four, three, two, one, four. It's up to you. Spianato, if you just tried to translate that, you would think, oh, it probably means like spinning or something because, because those sound like lacy spinning textures, but it actually just means flat, like, um, and uh, very tranquil. So I always try to come with a very flat hand as well. I don't think it's saying, you know, flat hand. It's saying, you know, a leveled texture, very calm. Like a, I like to think of, you know, a very still lake in the morning um, before the sun comes out. It seems like you always get that glassy surface. So think of your left hand being as that glassy surface. And then your right hand is this gorgeous singing line above that. This could even represent like sunlight at the beginning of the day. So, but you'll notice that I'm playing with quite flat fingers. The reason I like to do that, it gives more surface area to the key and it allows me with more control uh, to transfer my weight into the keys. Okay, so that's why I'm playing like that. If you want to know how to get those like that, it took me quite